Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan, and I hope everyone is doing well. Um, today's workshop revolves around Tinkercad software. Now, before I start off, I want to explain about Tinkercad software. It is a platform actually utilized uh, to create 3D models and circuits for electronics. It is actually uh, very known for its simplicity and ease of use. And mainly, they are used to convert the 3D models to actually take them to the 3D printers. But let me show you on how to start off on Tinkercad. So simply just go click on Tinkercad so you don't have to download or anything it's a very simple and straightforward now you can sign in if you have an existing account like I do oh so in here it automatically took me to my dashboard because I already signed in now uh, Tinkercad actually varies from 3d designs to circuits to code blocks to lessons now if you want further information about Tinkercad and about the 3d models you can click on the lessons and you can learn more into it now for today's workshop and purposes we're going to be picking circuits once I click on circuits I get all my existing models in here that I have used previously but for today's workshop I'm just going to be creating a new circuit <laughs> there you go. So it took so it took me to the main view of the circuit. Now as in here as you see these are the main tools of Tinkercad. So this is the rotation, this is the delete, the undo, redo, this is annotation. Annotation is basically a note and this is you can show you can view them and hide them. So depending if you want to see them. Now there is a right button that you can click on. These are the components. It varies from LED to breadboards as you can see them all here to piazzo these are buzzer okay and to all so there are millions of components that you can search okay and you can just type it in here and it automatically sets you there now as you can see here there are starters what are starters starters are basically um, an existing models so for example i would go for basics these models are already having connections already with connections so for example if you see here there's already connections in here <coughs> but for today's workshop i'm just going to be clicking on arduino <coughs> so today i'm going to be showing you blink so there's blink fade button there's many um other existing models but for today's workshop i'm going to be focusing on blink and showing you more into it because this is a very basic idea of Arduino. Okay. Okay. Let me show you more into it. So this is a resistor. So you can click on it and you can name it. So now naming is very important twice, especially when you're having a lot of models at simultaneously. So it's very important to name every component. So for example, some it's resistor one. And depending on how much uh, resistance do you want to have it. So this is, you can change the units in here. Now this is an LED. You can change LED one, for example. So this is very important. Just click on the component and you can change its color. Okay. As you can see here, red. Let me show you yellow and many more white. Okay. Now, as you can see here, what is an Arduino? Just a basic overview of an Arduino. Arduino is a basically an open source prototyping platform. It is used for building electronics uh, projects. Now it consists of both physical programmable circuits, as you can see here, board, and a software that actually runs on your computer where you can write and upload the computer code to the physical board. Now, in here, Arduino has digital pins and a ground here. Oh, sorry. This is the ground. And it has analog pins. And here, this is 5 volts. This is the power that supplies to the input. Now, what is analog pins and what is digital pins? Now, for analog pins, analog pins here, for most Arduino users, it is to read the analog sensors, okay? But what are the digital pins? In, moreover, it is basically they're convic configured as an input, okay? So these are configured as an input, and they supply current to the component. So, for example, here, so here it is supplying current to the resistor. Maximum current that is supplied per pin is actually 40 mega amps. 
So you have a brief description about Arduino and its components. Now, why do we need a resistor? A resistor is actually essential, essential because it is needed. Because if resistors are not included, the device will have a higher chances to get damaged. Because if the circuit operates on some tools without resistors, it actually might get, or it might get short circuited, and you want to prevent that. That's for sure. Now, let me just. Now, a lot of people ask. Why is Tinkercad so special? Because you can create the model, you can code it, you can simulate it, and then you can export it in the same process without having a lot of um, kind of steps. You know what I mean? So as you see here, codes are already pre-generated. Now, in this case, because I already picked an existing um, uh, existing model, but if you don't pick a pre-existing model, then you have to generate your own code, that's for sure. As you see, these are the codes. Now the codes can vary from blocks to blocks plus text to text, depending on uh, your flexibility and feasibility, depending on what how you feel, um, you know, uh, comfortable around it. And then you can start simulating it, and then you can export or share it. Let me let me stop it for a second. Let me close the code so I can show you how is it. So it's yeah, it blinks and turns on and off, on and off, fine. And then you can export it and share it. Now let me explain to you, okay, let me have to stop the simulation first. I want to explain to you about the code. Now, um, okay, let me explain it to you. Let me have the model in here so you can see it properly. Uh, in here, so this is already an existing, uh, existing code, but let me just explain to you uh, to have a brief idea. So this is notation. Notations are used for commenting. So I want to go in here and click on in here. So I wanna, I so comment. For example, I want the LED to turn on. It's just a comment. It will not affect the loop or the system whatsoever. Now I go for the, uh, for the output because I have an output which in this case it is a set built-in LED, right? I set it built-in. Now I go to high. Why would I go high? Because I want it on, right? High means on. Low means off. Fine. Now this control. The control is basically a delay, a delay function. So for example, it has to wait for one second or millisecond. You can change depending on your situations. For example, I wanted to wait a three seconds. Okay. So this is only turns on. One does it turn off? So I have to set another output. Okay. Just drag and drop. Okay. To low. Low means off. And then I go for control, which is waiting here. Oops. Okay. And in here. And you can change it to five seconds. Right? It's a delay. Oh, set up. And then you can comment. So you go and you can go to the notation and you can comment in. So for example, I want it here. Okay. I want the LED to turn off. So it's a simple, basically, an idea. Blocks are very, very useful because it makes the code very simple and straightforward, and you can understand it thoroughly. Uh, you can save it as well. Let us try the simulation. Let me close the code and start simulating it. So it turns on and off, on and off, but it waits for, I said two seconds, and then I said four seconds, I believe, yeah. Okay. So, and then you stop the simulation. As I mentioned before, there are three types of coding, blocks, blocks plus text, or text. Most of you will be very familiar with the text, as you guys can see here. This is already a pre-generated code, because I clicked on the starters, which is basically the existing models. Okay? I hope everyone um, got a useful idea about Tinkercad. Now my colleague will be explaining further about how to make or to create a mini piano using Tinkercad. Thank you. Hello everybody. This is Kirtana here. Today I'll be explaining how to build circuits on Tinkercad as well, especially focusing on building a DIY mini piano virtually. So let's click on circuits here and then click on create new circuit. 
So let's just look into what exactly is this mini piano is. So we are just going to be having keys like the real piano. So this is a mini piano with with just seven push buttons and seven notes. So we are going to be having our push buttons. We are going to having a bass, which is our breadboard to make several connections. We are going to have an Adreno so that when we play that it will have a specific musical note. And then we have an RGB LED so that when we click on a specific note, a specific push button, it shows up a different color. So let's start on. First, let's look into what are the components that we'll be needing for today's workshop. We need an Adreno, breadboard, resistors, RGB LED, and then wires, piezo buzzer, and that's about it. So let's just sort out all our components on the workstation here. And then let's give a brief explanation on each of the components. And then let's move on connecting the circuits. So let's get our components onto the workstation. I'm just typing out Adreno. We're going to be using Adreno, you know. Let's place it here. Then we'll be needing a breadboard. Just drag it here. We'll be needing a buzzer. Piazza buzzer. Let's place it here. Then we'll be needing seven push buttons for our seven beautiful musical notes. Four, five, six, and seven. So we're going to be needing seven resistors, seven for the push buttons, and one for the buzzer. So yeah, we have our eight resistors, seven for the push button and one for the buzzer. Then we'll be needing RGB LED here. So let's just place it here. Okay, now just let's briefly talk about all of our components and then start connecting them. So why are we using an RGB LED? As, we, as I previously discussed that, when we click on a specific button, we want a specific color on the RGB. So that's the reason we are connecting RGB. And there's also an other option of connecting LEDs to your push buttons. Like you can just have a bunch of seven LEDs for your seven push buttons so that when you click on them, it will individually show up the color. But RGB is always an advantage because it has a wide option of colors. It makes a mixture of red, blue, and green to give almost 16 million colors. It shows up 255 level of colors for each of them. And when you multiply 256 into 256 into 256, you can end up having a probability of 16,000 colors. So this is always an advantage. So we are using an RGB here. And then we have a piezo buzzer. So piezo buzzer is our output device. It has positive and the negative hand. We are going to connect negative to the ground and the positive to the digital pin. Even uh, we have a RGB LED, even it's our output device. So the buzzer gives a buzzer tone with a specific musical tone. So it works good for our piano since we, are, we can't use uh, speakers in this specific workshop in like in a virtual mode, but you can actually use them in, when you're doing in real time. So we are using a buzzer here. Then we have a resistors. Resistor, we have already talked about it many times in our previous workshops that resistors not only limit the current in the components, but also help us in a many different ways. So the reason for connecting a buzzer, the reason for connecting a resistor is when there's excess resistance connected to in a circuit, what happens is it opposes opposes the current. So it's always important to know to choose the right resistance for your circuits. So how do we choose the right resistor? You can use a primitive method, which is you can use Ohm's law and as well as 
um, power equa a power equation to find the resistance, or you can use online uh, resistance calculators where you can just uh, type in your voltage and current values to give your resistance. So you can do any of them to find the resistance. So it's I'm just highlighting it that use a proper resistor wherever it be needed. But in this workshop, we're going to be using seven resistors with 10K and one resistor with 100K, which goes to the buzzer. So there are also many other reasons why we connect a resistance because a resistor, because uh, when we connect a resistor, it's always advantageous when we don't, because when you just uh, switch an on off your uh, devices, what happens is you, it creates an electric surge, which uh, gives lots of energy in the form of heat, which will break your components. So we don't want this to happen. So yeah, please make sure you use a proper resistor, not low and not high. If you use a low resistance, your devices won't work properly. So please make sure to use a proper resistor. Then we have our breadboard. So basically this minus and plus, which you see here, these two rails work horizontally and these rails work vertically so these are called the power rails and these are called these are called the terminal rails these work vertically and these work horizontally then we have a push buttons here push buttons have two terminals this is terminal 1 and this is terminal 2 so this is terminal 1a 1b 2a and 2b so this is just a brief idea about all of our components. So I think we can start connecting them. So let's place our push button number one to here. I'm just giving a single line space for the push buttons, like the space in between them. So similarly, I'm just connecting all my push buttons onto the breadboard. Yes, I'm done connecting my push buttons now onto the breadboard. So I just want to draw my ground and 5e supply to the breadboard first. So let's click on ground. And to the negative first. So I'm just leaving it in green color, but I want to use red for the 5e. So first, let's do the similar thing. 5e to the positive. And you get an option here where you can customize the colors of your wires. So I'm just giving it a red for 5V supply. I just want to extend the same connection to the other side. So I'm clicking on the negative to the negative here. And the positive to the positive here. You can customize accordingly in the way you want. Try to keep it clean because it won't be confusing for you in future. So I've just extended my, extended my 5e and ground supply to the other side of the breadboard too. Now uh, I think we are good to start connecting our analog pins to the input devices, which are push buttons. So I'm connecting A0. To the terminal 1A of the first push button. So I'm just giving it a color. I want to choose black. And A1 to the terminal 1A of the second push button. So let's click on, let's not use red and green. Let's click on orange. And click on A2. And 1A of the third resistor. Let's use yellow. And click on A3. Just drag them. And click on the exact place where you want it to be. And then take a turn. Click here. 1A of the fourth push button. We have used yellow. Let's not use green. Let's click here. Yes. Let's click on A4. To 
the terminal 1A of fifth push button. Let's click on blue. And let's give it purple. And for the final push button, we don't see any ports for the analog pins here. So we can just use one of them. I'm just using four in the digital pins. It won't be a problem. So let's connect it to the final push buttons, terminal 1A. I'm using pink for this. So I'm done giving my input connections now. Yes. Now I'm just going to connect my other side of the terminal 1, which is terminal 1B, to the resistors. I'm connecting a resistor, so one end to the ground and the other end to the 1B. This drives the same supply here. I don't want one kilovolt, I want 10 kilovolts. So I'm just changing into 10 and the units are similar. So I'm repeating the same process even with the other resistors. So let's change it to 10. I just drag and drop them here. Yes, you have your things in place, but just make sure your resistance values are correct. Just use 10 for all our resistors linked with the push buttons. Yes, we are done. So now uh, let's give a power supply to the terminal 2V for our push buttons. So you can just click on here and take it to the plus, which is 5V, and give it a red color to keep it simple that you understand that it is connected to the power supply. Resistors doesn't need any external voltage for them to work, but our push buttons need an external voltage. So this is the reason we are connecting them to 5V supply. Yes. Yes, we are done connecting them. So it's time to connect our piezo buzzer. We have a resistor here. So we'll be using 100 kilovolt resistor. You can connect it here. One, the terminal two, which is the negative ones, is uh, needed to be connected to a resistor and to the ground. So since we are grounding it, I'm just using green color here. For the positive, it goes to the input pin or a digital pin. In this case, I'm using a digital pin number five. But please make sure you just use the same pin numbers in the code or you can change your code according to the pin or change the connections according to the code, whichever your comfort is. So since it's a 
a digital pen i'm using a different color it's time to connect rgbs now so we have red cathode blue and green the colors are the digital pins and the cathode goes to the ground so in a similar way i'm going to use one more resistor for the rgb2 the cathode first goes to the one end of the resistor and then to the ground and then the red goes to 11 let's change the color to red and blue to the 10 and green let's leave it green like that so we are done with the connections now i'm just so one more advantage we have on tinkercad is we can name our push buttons so since we are specifically working on a piano i decided to give them some names based on the real musical notes so just na let's name them so let's name them button underscore a button underscore b so basically the music notes come in an order a b c d e f g right so let's use the same order and our last button g yes we are done connecting all the devices as well as naming them properly now let's use our mini notes to name the devices which we have used to keep it clear i'm naming it rgb led Arduino is here. Passer. Resistors. wires i'm just dragging it here and then breadboard yes so we are done naming our components we connected them properly our buzzer is connected our rgb is connected now i think it's time to code Faiza will take over. I hope you find the information helpful. Um, hello everyone. My name is Faiza, and I will be looking into the software side of the Arduino uh, piano. So I'll start off by demonstrating how the entire program executes. Uh, but first, we need to change in the register values of the output components. So the resistance for the RGB LED will be 220 ohms. So make sure it's 220, and the resistance 
for the buzzer will be 450 ohms. So we need to change them before we actually simulate the program. So it's simulated and we can start. It's red for button A. Green for button B. We can see the name of the button here as well. Blue for button C. Yellow for button D. Pink for button E. Light blue for button E. Oh, sorry. And white. So let me just do it all over again. That's how it works. Now let's stop the simulation and I will jump in to the code and explain step by step what, how, how we can uh, program this entire piano. So the programming language in Arduino is um, C. Um, so firstly, we start off by defining the notes for each key that we press. So we have seven buttons here, A to G, and each specifies, each is specified to a certain note. So for note A, I have given 262, and you can actually change these notes according to your desired pitch. And we have seen that uh, the higher the value of the note, the higher will be uh, the pitch. So you can adjust to your, accordingly to whatever you want. These are just some um, sample um, notes which I have gathered and and works. So we first define the notes, then we'll be initializing initializing our pins and the components of of the piano. So the components my uh, the components have already been connected. Um, by my friend Kirtina and uh, we'll just be initializing it now here. So the buzzer is connected to pin 5 as is mentioned here. Uh, so the buzzer here is connect connected to pin 5 on the Arduino board and this is the brown uh, wire right here. Then we have all the buttons uh, button A to button G and they're all connected to the Arduino board as well. Um, so this is the button A for example and is connected to pin A0 with this brown, uh, with this sorry black wire right here and button, button, two, button B is connected with this orange wire to A1. So we say that B, B button B is connect is equal to A1 and so on. So C, which is yellow, is button C, you can see it here as well. Button C is connected to A2. Yeah, so we do it accordingly. Only a button G is connected to 4, pin number 4. This is G, the pink one, is connected to pin number 4. So it doesn't matter, we can connect it anywhere you want, as long as it's, both of them are connected to each other. So yeah, that's all pretty much it. We define um, the pins and the components, and all of them are constant because uh, we don't exactly change the pins um, while uh, during the process. Uh, so now let's um, look into the inbuilt functions of Arduino. There are two inbuilt functions, uh, void setup and void loop. So void setup will run once when the Arduino is powered up. It only runs, run, runs, one, runs once. And uh, void loop uh, is where the main code uh, goes in, the main logic of our entire program. Yeah, so it runs continuously after this setup function is already executed and the statements in the loop function will be executed from top to bottom uh, to bottom and when you reach the end of the loop function 
uh, the program jumps back up to the first line in the loop and starts all over. So that's how it always continues. Um, so let's um, go step by step and look into the contents of the setup void of uh, setup function. So inside this function, we are calling another function called pin mode, and pin mode takes in two arguments, which is this is the pin number and output or input. So um, the pin mode function will which is used which is used to configure a specific pin to behave either as an output or an input so um, in our case um, the buzzer uh, and the rgb led pins um, will be the output pins as they display the outcomes through their sound and light to the user so these two will be the output pins and, and the input pins will be the buttons which act as uh, the piano keys that the user will press. These are all the input pins. So you have seven input pins and one output pin for the buzzer and three for the RGB LED. So, um, We'll be assigning um, the pins and stating whether it's input or output in this function. The pins of the buzzer and the buttons have already been defined above. As we see that we call um, the button, for example, this one, button A is an input. So button A, the pin of button A has already been defined over here. We have initialized them previously. So we just call in the variables in this function. Same thing for the buzzer. We have already defined that the buzzer, the piazza buzzer, is in pin number five. So we just call in the variable of the buzzer and mention that it's an output pin, uh, as an output pin. Um, so we can do the same for the RGB LED, but I haven't done it here yet. Um, we could just mention that 11 constant and constant integer um, maybe because 11 is red in this case. So 11 is connected to red. So red will be the pin number 11. So you can say that red equals 11. So you can do it for all the colors. RGB LED consists of three LEDs, uh, as you can see here. From the name, you can guess that RGB stands for R is red, B is blue, and G is green. So we have three colors. Um, yeah, so in this case, red is connected to 11, um, uh, blue is connected to 10, and green is connected to 9. So we just mentioned it here as well in the setup function. So we just mentioned whether it's input or output uh, in setup function, which is quite easy. You can just figure it out by looking at the circuit. Next, we jump into the while loop. So the um, the while loops uh, loop right here. We have we have its conditions to check if the specific button uh, is pressed and assign the assign the outcomes to it. So we check if button A is pressed, and if it is pressed, if it's true, then is going to um, um, have the tone which is, is going to give out the 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 tone as well as is going to show it um, its color so each of these button we have assigned an if condition so for button a for example it's going to be red and we have a certain tone which is note a note a we have already defined here as well so uh, same thing for each and every button we will be doing the same thing for example uh, button b is going to display the color green and is going to have the note it is going to be played is note B, which is a frequency of 294. So we do it for each and every button here. Because uh, each button responds to, a, to a, responds to a specific sound and light from the LED. So here we see that we have, a, we have another function called the 
Digital read function uh, is used to read the status of the buttons, whether it's pressed or not. That's what we see. And it takes an input, which is um, um, the pin of the button. We have to pass this uh, as, an, as, a, as a parameter in this function. Um, and this checks whether it's true. So um, in um, Arduino, uh, we're using C language. And in C language, any non-zero value is considered true. So in our case, we have one, which is a non-zero value. It could be one, two, three, could be anything. And it just checks whether it's true or not with this. And any zero value is considered false. If you have a zero here, that means it's going to check if it's false and do whatever it has to do, like any function. Um, so in our case, yes, it's going to check whether button A is true, whether A button A is pressed or not. If it's pressed and if it's true, then we're going to execute uh, and see display its color and also its tone. Yeah, that's how it works. So we make use of uh, the tone, uh, inbuilt tone function. Uh, this function generates only one tone at a time and it outputs the notes of each key. So we have a tone function for each and every, um, each and every key. Yeah, each and every key has a tone function. Um, you can see it here as well in the code here. And it takes in uh, three arguments. So we have one, two, and three. All of them here takes in three arguments. So um, the first argument is the pin number of the buzzer uh, to play the notes, okay? So it needs to, it needs to uh, um, output the sound, right? The notes. So where do, do they output the notes? Uh, the sound of the notes is going to be through the buzzer. So this is the, we have already defined this previously as a variable. Piazzo is, a uh, piezo, sorry. Piezo is a note, uh, is, sorry, is um, connected to um, pin number five over here on the, on the Arduino board. So yeah, uh, we just call in that variable. The tone first argument will be the pin number. Second will be the note frequency, which determines the pitch of the sound. This is already defined above as well. The first thing we defined is the notes, right? So we call the notes. So for button number, button A, we'll, we're going to call in note A. And the third argument is the duration in milliseconds which basically means how long the note will play. So in our case, it will be 100 milliseconds. It's going to play for 100 milliseconds. So for each and every button, we're going to have a note function, which will take in uh, the output pin, which is in our case, the buzzer, the note frequency, which we have already defined, uh, and the duration of how long it's going to play. So we have duration is going to be the same for all our buttons. We just change in the frequency, which is the note, the note frequency. We'll be changing that. So for example, button D will be note D, button E will be note E. So yeah, accordingly, we just change it. And then we have another function after that, which is set color. Um, set color function is for each button to, it sets a specific color on the RGB LED when a key is pressed. So um, we have defined this function separately actually um, inside the loop itself over here. Yes, right here. And the reason for having this function uh, separately is to reuse the code again and again and avoid a repetition. So instead of having this function in each and every if condition, we have just defined it, defined it outside and just use the function along with the parameters and we just call it each and every um, if condition. So it makes um, makes it easy for us to uh, to code. So um, the set color function takes in um, three parameters: um, the red, green, and blue. And each of these has a range of zero to two fifty five. 
So red has a range of 0 to 255, green will have a range of 0 to 255, and blue will have a range of 0 to 255. And this range affects the output of the LED. That's how it works. So when you change, uh, when you adjust the, you can change the intensity of either red, green, or blue to create a completely new color. This is what we have done here, you know? Like, uh, for example, white, all of them are 255, and we get the color white. If one is 255, uh, and the next, I mean, one in this case will be red. If red is 255, green is zero, and so green, second argument is green, green is zero, and blue is 255 again, we get a magenta color. So you can, you can mix and match and get a, your desired color. And this is only possible because of the parameters we pass and, you know, how we change them. Um, so the analog write function, uh, it takes in um, a pin number and a value. So we have three values that we will be changing in order to get a specific color. Uh, we have three values in our case, a red, green, and a blue. And we mix these colors to get a, and this will give a different color, right? So red value is connected to pin 11, green value is connected to pin 9, and so on. So basically we are changing these values in the range of 0 to 55 because we are passing these values as the parameter. And these will be changed according to what you want to get your desired color. So now these, uh, we have connected these colors to these pins, right? And these pins, over here, um, uh, these colors are kind of connected to the PWM pins. These are called PWM. Um, PW, to P, PWM pins are the pins marked with a tilde sign. Uh, and uh, you can see here, I think it's very tiny. Yes, right here. And these can simulate analog outputs. Uh, PWM, uh, in short, for um, pulse. Uh, with modulation um, it's a technique for controlling um, the power so we use it here to control the brightness the brightness of each of the LED yeah we change the intensity or brightness and to to obtain to obtain a different color that's what we're doing we're changing the brightness of each and every color from in the range of 0 to 255 to, to, to get a different color um, yeah, um, that's what we're doing, and then uh, we use this function in each and every button here. Uh, let's go back to our circuit. Yes, so each and every button will be set with a different color, as we see here. And you can play around with this function actually and create and I mean display any kind of color you want. But it has to be between 0 to 255 for each and every um, parameter here. Okay, so lastly, we have a delay. Now, uh, we end the while loop with a delay of 15 milliseconds. And the time for the delay can be changed by passing a different time value as you like. Uh, but the delay function prevents uh, overlapping by separating the tone for each of um, these buttons. So, um, for example, if you frequently press um, a lot of keys together, a lot of these keys together, the delay will be able to handle it and um, provide like a consistency in the program. That is the reason we have a delay to separate all our tones and um, cue them, actually, kind of like cue them in uh, for the program to receive the inputs. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And um, you can uh, get the code from the description and um, start simulating your own piano and um, with the colors changing and the tones changing and and um, yeah that's that's how we create an Arduino piano with the RGB LEDs as well.
hope you enjoyed our session.